In the last unit, we saw how to represent numbers in computers using binary bits, but now we can represent numbers. That's the important thing. Now, the whole point of representing something is if we want to manipulate it. What kind of manipulations do we want to do with, with numbers? Well, we want to add them, subtract them, multiply them, and so on. This is what we're going to learn how to do in this unit. Well, not all of them. What we will really be talking about is how to add. Once we do that, we'll basically get the whole rest of all the other operations uh, almost for free. It turns out that once we understand how to represent negative numbers, which we will do in next unit, we will be able to get subtraction for free and to understand which of two numbers is greater for free. Multiplication and divisions are more complicated, but nicely enough, we can actually postpone them to software. We will not build in hardware any multiplication or division uh, circuitry, but rather we will actually let software do it, and things are much easier to do in software because you just have to write little programs rather than actually connect stupid little devices. So we get two sequences of binary numbers. How can we add them? Well, one way we already know how to do, and that's going to be very easy, we convert them to decimal, we add the decimal numbers, that we know how to do from second grade, we get a decimal number, we convert it back to binary, that we just learned how to do, and we get the answer. This is great and fine, but of course that's not what a computer does. A computer doesn't know how to add decimal numbers without first converting them to binary numbers. So we need to figure out how to actually do the addition of binary numbers, and directly without converting them to decimal. And how are we going to do that? As usual, everything that I need to know I learned in second grade, so we need to go back to second grade. We need to add 5,783 plus another number. How do we do this kind of addition? What did we learn? Well, we start with the ones with the rightmost digit, and we add 3 plus 6, we get a 9, and we're all very happy with that. This is easy. But now what happens when we do the next digit, and we have 8 plus 5? Well, 8 plus 5 is 13, and we cannot write 13 underneath the tens position, because 13 is greater than 10. So we all learned this important and amazing trick of writing only 3 and having 1 as a carry to the 100th place. And then we know how to con we can continue from there. And then we can con add the 1 to the 7 and so on, and after uh, we finish with the leftmost digit, we have the complete result. So, exactly the same thing we're going to do in binary numbers, only it's going to be much, much easier. So, we take 1 plus 0, the rightmost two digits, and we need to add them, and that's easy. 1 plus 0 is 1. We can write it down. If we have 0 plus 0, that's also going to be very easy. We can write them down. Now, the first time we get into a problem is we have 1 plus 1. Because 1 plus 1 is 2, 2 is more than what we can write in a single digit, bi Boolean bit. So we need to actually do the same kind of trick, write down 0 and carry the 1 to the next position. And now we can continue. We need to add 1 plus 0 plus 1. That's again more than what we can write in a single bit because that's 2. So we write 0, we carry 1. Now we have 1 plus 1 plus 1. The answer is 3. So we write down 1 and we carry another 1. And that's how we continue until we get the final solution, the final answer, and that's all there is to it. In uh, the rest of the unit, we'll actually learn how to do this thing exactly, how to do this thing completely mechanically, in the sense of really understanding how every operation works in terms of binary operations that we've learned so far. But the basic principle is extremely simple, just like we learned in second grade. Before we continue, there is one thing I want to take out of the way, and that is a question of overflow. Suppose that we were somehow unlucky, in the, and the two leftmost bits of our, the two numbers that we were adding were 1. So what is the problem with that? The problem is that, that when we add them, we have a carry that needs to go to the left of the word size, and there is no place to, carry, to put that carry bit because we finished our word size. So what would, do we do? Will we raise some warning or anything like that? Well, the answer is very simple. What is usually done in computer systems is nothing. We just ignore any carry bit that does not fit into the word. Uh, what does that mean, really? So if you try to look at it from a mathematical point of view, what it means is that the addition that we are actually doing in our hardware is not real integer addition, because we cannot go beyond the numbers that fit inside the word size. Instead, what we have is really addition modulo 2 to the width of the word size. Uh, if you look at it mathematically. 
In other, in, 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 other, in other words, the answer is correct, but may, except for the case that it may be off by exactly 2 to the n, where n is a word size. If the result was more than 2 to the n, the hardware automatically decreases 2 to the n, which is basically the carry that we just threw because there was an overflow. So that's what you usually do, and uh, the rest of anyone using a computer, anyone using a computer in software, needs to remember that if he exceeds the word size, then the result that, he get, that you get is not the true integer result of the integer addition, but rather the truncated result after the overflow was already disposed of. Once we took good, got that out of the way, let's go back and try to understand how are we, we actually going to build this kind of an adder. How can we actually get, build hardware that gets two numbers as bits, as input bits, and the output is another number that actually represents the sum of the two input numbers. We'll do that in three easy stages. In the first stage, we'll just learn how to add two bits. Very simple. The second stage, we'll learn how to add three bits. Uh, it may seem there is a long way to go if we are progressing so slowly, but then in one big step, we'll be able to add any two numbers of any number of digits. So let's start with that. So let's look at a typical operation we were, when we were adding two bits in the, in the process we just looked at. How do we took a 1 plus 1 and we added it and we got a zero sum and a 1 carry? How did we do that? Well, the most important thing is to notice that it, the rest of the bits of all these two numbers do not, do not matter at all when we're doing just this one bit slice of operation. Whatever the other bits were, as long as what we're adding now is 1 plus 1, and as long as one additional important thing, the carry so far, the carry we had to this place was zero, whatever the other bits are, we still are doing the operation exactly the same. We're going to put right zero below these two ones, and we're going to have a carry of one. This tells us that now we have really a just a simple binary operation, taking two bits, A and B, and producing two output bits which depend only on them, which is one of them we're going to call the sum, the binary sum of these two things, and the other is the carry. And this is really the first step that we need to do. This will actually allow us to add two bits. Now this operation, really, which is a slice one, one, one step of the process that we saw so far, is thus naturally abstracted by a chip. <coughs> and the chip gets two inputs, A and B, two outputs, and we know exactly for every combination of inputs what the output is supposed to be. This chip is called a half adder, and implementing it is the first thing that you'll do in the exercise for this week. In fact, we're going to give you the exact HDL that describes the interface of this chip, and you're just going to have to do the implementation which actually does implement this operation that we now understand what it is. And we're finished the first step of our journey, the journey to add numbers, adding two bits. Now, if you remember, the only real restrictions that we had when we were doing this addition of two bits was the fact that the carry to this point was zero. But that's not the general case. What happens more generally if there may be a carry? Suppose now that we get another bit in the input called C, which describes the carry from the previous step, which can be either zero or one. Now how do we do this addition? Well, we know we add the three numbers and we still get a sum and a carry. Again, now we get a Boolean gate, a chip if you wish, that we know exactly its functionality. We have three inputs, A, B, and C, two outputs, sum and carry, and there are eight possibilities of the inputs, and for each of them we can very well know what the outputs are. So that's another chip, and that chip is called a full adder, and again, you can just go and implement it. And indeed, this is the second part of our journey to addition. And again, we're giving you the HDL of this chip, and please go ahead and implement it. And now we're ready for the final step for doing everything. We get two full numbers, and we want to add them. How are we going to do that? Well, we already know how to do every single step of the process, so we just have to repeat doing this single step. So let's look at what we did. We first, let's color the bits the rightmost bit yellow, the next one green, the next one blue. This is just so we can talk about them in terms of uh, colors, but of course in the implementation there are no colors, just different bits. 
So we start, of course, by adding the two yellow bits. And adding the two yellow bits is just a half adder because we have no carry so far. And we get a yellow sum and a yellow carry. Now the next step is we need to add the yellow carry to the two green bits. And from that we get a green sum and a green carry. Now we take the green carry, add it to the two blue bits. Each one of these colored steps is simply a full adder now. The thing that takes that yellow carry, the two green bits, and outputs a green carry and a green sum, that's just a full adder. And that already we've implemented. So to implement the whole thing, we just need to basically connect 16 of these full adders, or maybe 15 full adders and one half adder for the rightmost bit, connect them together in the right way, and you get exactly a f an adder. And this is what you're supposed to do. This is our 16-bit adder. It accepts two numbers now. Each one of them is a bus of 16 bits and outputs a single number that is supposed to be their sum as 16-bit integers. And again, we're going to give you the HDL for this. It just specifies that you're going to get two numbers, two 16-bit numbers as buses in input and produce a single number 16-bit bus as output that is their sum in terms of two's representation of the number. And you can go ahead and implement that. So we've just learned how to add two numbers in a very concrete sense of building the chips that actually do that. The next unit will actually uh, go back and actually look at how do we represent negative numbers, something that we still owe you from last unit. Once we do that, it will turn out that we'll get subtraction for free. After we get that under our belt, then we'll go to the capstone of this week's, uh, this week's uh, lecture, which is building a complete arithmetic logic unit. And it turns out that most of the cleverness is already done. The most clever thing that we have in an ALU unit is just adding two numbers. But of course, we need a lot of logic around it, and that's what we will do in the fourth unit.